with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got author Julie Rogers Pamelia with me. So welcome, Julie. Thanks. All right. So we froze up right as I introduced you. So welcome, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just thrilled to death to talk to you. You're you're coming on to talk about your grandparents, Ward Rogers, Dale Evans kind of iconic i mean that's when you think cowboy that's kind of who you think of yeah pretty much huh i mean that's, <laughs> that that's john wayne well definitely some john wayne definitely some john wayne yeah <laughs> <laughs> in fact grandpa's first movie was with john wayne what was the, which one was that dark command he played oh. uh claire trevor's impetuous younger brother i think and uh I'm guessing yeah, that was, was probably from the 40s, maybe. Yeah, it was early on. It was definitely yeah. early on. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's uh it's a shame we lost John Wayne as early as we did. I know. He um I know his his kids, some of his kids. He has a lot, but I know uh Patrick and um oh. I was on with Patrick's sister too, and and we rode in the Rose Parade with some of the family members. Oh, that's so, pretty great. Good family. Yeah, yeah, we used to ride with a group called the Sons and Daughters of the Real West, spelled R-E-E-L. And so June Lockhart's <laughs> daughter was with us, Annie, and and the Wayne family. And Well, how neat is that? Yeah, it was yeah. fun. I love that. So so let's let's jump into it because I, I we were talking offline. I know you're a school teacher, but at some point you decided you're going to write a book about your grandparents. So it's called Your Heroes, My Grandparents, A Granddaughter's Love. And it came out like yesterday, right? Uh, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So talk a little bit about what the book's about. You know, why did you decide to write it? And what was that like kind of going through that process and now seeing it published? Well, it's all been something that I never really aspired to do. Uh, it started as just a mom gift to my three grown sons for Christmas because I got to thinking, you know, there's so much history that I've experienced that they don't know about. I wanted to kind of leave a little small legacy of, of their family. Yeah. So I was yeah. going to go to Kinko's and get it bound and just make it a, a very homemade mom gift. And then as I go around to different Western festivals, people always say, you have such good stories. We really want you to write a book. And I said, well, I kind of am, but it's for my sons. And slowly but surely, I got talked into widening my audience and and actually publishing it. And so that's how that came about. And, you know, doing the book, it I got writer's block at first. I thought, I don't have anything to say. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to start with one memory that I have of them. Yeah. me. And I wrote just three pages of this one little memory. And then I thought, oh, that was fun. And that was really heartwarming for me. So I'm going to write another little memory. And so I did that. And pretty soon I had 33 little memories or chapters. And that's why it's kind of fun to read because you don't really have to read it from beginning to end. You can just pick it up and the chapters are maybe three, four pages long and you can just Love read one, one memory. And you know, it intertwines their their public side too. Yeah. But for the most part, it's not a biography by any means of just them, but it's a very personal feel-good book about a, a relationship between a granddaughter and her grandparents. So, yeah, I love that. And it was it was kind of a big family, right? It was a huge family. <laughs> yeah. Um, they had nine children and five were adopted, and they had very loving, giving hearts. They were very inclusive and we have a real multicultural family because they adopted from Korea and Native American and Scotland and um, and special needs. My uncle was special needs. And so, you know, there's very, 
Well, they're really they're relevant for the times because they were inclusive before everyone's making uh, an issue of it. And yeah. so I just grew up with lots of stereotypes because we had it all within my family. Why do you think they were were like that? Because at that time, that was pretty unusual. Yeah, that wasn't the norm. Um, they just loved children and they didn't care what country they came from or what language they spoke. They just loved children and they wanted a big family. I think of all the things I've heard of of the two of them, and there's been a lot, that's probably my favorite one. They they just loved kids and kind of loved, you know, having that family. I I think that's terrific. Very, uh, you know, Brad and Angelina 50 years ago. (laughs) They were before it was really the thing to do. And um, and also they changed the cultural landscape of what people think about kids with special needs, because back then they would just stick them in institutions. And so when they had their little daughter, that was the only biological daughter that they had together. Uh, She was born with Down syndrome and heart problems. And so the doctor said when they left the hospital, so where are you going to put her? And my grandpa was like, well, what do you mean? Where am I going to put her? We're going to take her home. And they said, no, you're going to institutionalize her, aren't you? And it's like, are you kidding me? No. And so People were afraid to bring those kids out in public back then. It's a shame that it was like that, but it was. It is. So when they started bringing Robin out and talking about her publicly, they started noticing all these families coming out in droves to their rodeos and such to um, with these kids. And so they noticed that and then asked like Madison Square Gardens or wherever they were at to save those first few rows right around the arena for those kids. And so after the shows, they would stay on their horses and side pass along the railing and they'd shake hands and greet them and take pictures. And it was really that. special. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's amazing. Did, did one of them teach you to ride a horse? You know, it's funny. I, I sat on trigger, uh, you know, grandpa would put us on trigger, but yes. I wouldn't say that's learning how to ride a horse. That's just, you know, <laughs> in the corral walking around kind of thing. And so as an adult, I wanted to ride in the Rose Parade with my Aunt Cheryl. And my Aunt Cheryl said, well, honey, do you know how to ride? No. So my husband taught me how to ride because he's a really good horseman. Yeah. He's funny. He's Italian Sicilian and he's a baseball coach, but he's really a good horseman. So he taught me how to ride. And he said, I can't believe I am teaching Roy Rogers' granddaughter how to ride a horse. I mean, that really? is kind of hard to believe. I mean, you were yeah. you were right there on trigger. Right there, <laughs> right there. So we have horses now. And actually, my horse is with me on the book, on the front cover of the book. So yeah, that's awesome. what's uh, what's your horse's name? Sonny. Yeah. Nice. And he's actually the other one, pal, he's a descendant of one of the um uh, stunt horses of trigger oh really so, yeah and they're both palominos gee what a shocker yeah, i love that's, palominos. that's hard to believe <laughs> and every time i walk into the stall just the smell just takes me back to my childhood it's so comforting to to smell the smell of horses and yeah. it's it's always a good feel to go out with my horses yeah i i love that i i, I See, we were talking a little bit about some of the costumes and stuff you've got behind you. Yeah. Do you like? Do you dress up on Halloween? You put the costumes. You know, on? Grandma used to give me all kinds of costumes out of their closet, and I don't know why because they were mostly just horrifyingly hideous. Uh, she'd say, <laughs> "I have a dress I think would look really good on you," and I'd just go, "No, no, no," and I would take it anyway and be very thankful but I'd stick it away in my Halloween box for costumes. And then later on, I used to, uh, then I started taking them out and thinking, you know, I should wear these to some of these Western festivals. Yeah. And so I do. And I've seen a lot of what I have on TV shows that she wore on the TV show. So it's kind of fun to have stuff that I can say, oh, I have that, you know, and um, I have grandpa's hat and uh, he used to. Yeah, it's pretty recognizable. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it has sweat stains in the front though. And I went a few years ago to get it cleaned uh, in LA to this place that always does, you know, with celebrity stuff. 
And he turns it over and he sees my grandpa's name that is signature that's engraved in the inside of the hat. And he said, wait, is this Roy Rogers hat? And I said, yeah, yeah, it is. And he said, are you kidding me? I'm not going to clean this. You got to keep these sweat stains. <laughs> I want to keep these. And I said, I, I do. Why? He was and, right. You know, when you grow up in a family, you don't always see things the way other people do because yeah. you just don't. It's your family. Things. Yeah. Yeah. You just look at it. I mean, when, how old were you when you kind of figured out that, you know, your grandparents were kind of a big deal? Well, it was second grade, actually. I remember oh. because uh, up until then, I thought everybody's grandpa had a TV show. And this was just my normal, and it's all I knew. So I thought that was normal for everybody. But um, he was on the cover of our weekly reader, and it's a little magazine that they would, you know, pass out like a newspaper type thing. And his yeah. cover was smack right on the front cover of it. And my teacher just went crazy, just so excited. And I thought, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you know, and it was really strange for me. I didn't know why she was so excited. So when I went home that day, I asked my parents a lot of questions. And that was really the beginning of me starting to understand that they had such an effect on people and that they did have a very public job. Yeah. Not like most grandparents. No, you know? no. Most grandparents didn't have the, uh, you know, their own show and yeah, I mean, all, you know, I was just seeing stuff. his picture on, on a lunchbox or something. And I just thought, okay, well, that's, you know, grandpa on a lunchbox. And I did don't know. You, I don't know did how you call was. them grandma and granddad? Well, we called them, uh, you know, early on, we called them Mama Dale and Daddy Roy. Only because my older sisters were so much older than me and the rest of the grandchildren that they were the same age as grandma and grandpa's kids that they were adopting. Oh, okay. So, so my grandma was only 35 when my oldest sister was born and she wasn't really ready to be called grandma yet. And uh, <laughs> so she told my mom and dad, why don't they just call us mama Dale and daddy Roy? Well, then when I came along eight years later, uh, all of the, you know, the grandparent machine was, was up and running, you know, the grandchildren mm -hmm. were all coming and they were calling them grandma and grandpa. So one day I was sitting on the floor with my cousin Lori and she said, why do you call them mama Dale and daddy Roy? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's just <laughs> what I'm told to call them. And everybody else was calling them grandma and grandpa. So I decided right then and there at the ripe old age of five in my wisdom that this was a silly name over here to call them. And I'm going to start calling them grandma and grandpa. And so I did. And my sisters started calling them grandma and grandpa after that too. And uh, yeah, so that's. So they that's kind it. of accepted it at that point. They're like, yeah. okay. Oh yeah. They had to, because, you know, with 16 grandchildren, you know, how can you oh <laughs> kind goodness. of turn your, your head on that? And they, they love being grandparents. They just, she just didn't want to be called grandma. That's yeah. all. I get that. I think that yeah. a, a, a lot of women think that way. Well, yeah. And it, when you're only in your 30s, you know, nowadays, I don't know, the lid is off. But but back then she was kind of like, hmm. yeah. Well, um, she had had kind of a rough upbringing. If, if I remember reading some of your stories that she got uh, got married pretty young, divorced pretty young before yes, her she and Lori got together. She uh, she eloped when she was 14 and had my dad at 15 wow. and then she was divorced at 17, not by her choice, but her her young husband just all of a sudden realized, wow, this is too much. I don't want to handle all of this yeah. with a wife and a son. So he left and she had to make it on her own. And it was it was tough. Um, and she was so bullheaded. She didn't want to give my dad to her mom to raise and uh to adopt actually because she wanted my dad she yeah. she adored my dad but she was seeking fame and the two just didn't go together and so my great grandma stepped in and did a lot of helping out uh with my dad yeah so, that's that's yeah that's awesome that's uh yeah. that's what you that's what family's for is yes. to help out in those situations because that and happens that to like, a lot best. of people that well, yeah, and it was the best thing for him because he ended up going to live for about four years with my 
my great grandma on the farm. And, you know, he went from in a tiny little apartment in Chicago, eating a half a can of beans a day and being now malnourished to living on the farm with animals, going to Boy Scouts, you know, just having friends. It was definitely a good thing for him. Yeah, that that's that's terrific. And was there ever a point in your life that you thought about maybe getting into entertainment or has that never been a, a you know, I I thought about the backside of it because I'm really interested in all the production end of it and yeah. the set dressing and all the the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And I remember watching that when we were on the Jonathan Winters show, the variety show. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing all that stuff going on and I thought, well, that's way more interesting than what's going on up here, you know? Uh, and, but my parents had seen the bad side of Hollywood right? with my dad growing up with my grandma and he had to pretend to be her brother. And there was just so much he didn't like about it that they encouraged me to go into teaching. They were both teachers and that's what I did. That's how I ended up in teaching. Wow. So. That's, that's actually pretty good direction. Nothing wrong with being Yeah, it actually was. And um, it's kind of like being on stage. You have to grab your audience and keep their attention and all that. So, <laughs> You know, I never knew that Dale had written Happy Trails. Okay, I didn't either. <laughs> I mean, no one in this family tells me anything. And you didn't know it. I didn't know it mm -hmm. until I was in college. And I heard it on the radio. Some guy was saying, you know, well, Dale Evans wrote that iconic song. I was like, are you kidding me? Nobody told me that. I went straight to the phone and called her up. I said, you wrote that? She's like, whoa, whoa, wrote what? And I said, Happy Trails. And she said, well, yeah. I said, why didn't you ever tell me that? She said, well, baby, I just didn't think it was that important. <laughs> and it's like, not important. I'm finding out for the first time from a stranger on the radio that you wrote that. And um. Yeah, so I found out late in life, but Grandpa used to sing and whistle it and hum it around the house, so I knew the song. Well, there yeah, is. it's probably one of the most recognizable songs ever. It is. They it was it was voted the most recognizable TV theme song. Um, I don't know back when, um, and you know, it, there's there's a lot of people in different genres that know that song and use it, and. Um, I had that in the book too. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I love the, the behind the scenes stories because it, the, the book really allows you to get to know both of them on kind of a intimate level, you know, like a family level, which most of us would never get to do. You only get to see them in their kind of Hollywood personas. Right. And I think, um, even the books that my aunt and uncle wrote are great. They're really good books. Um, this one's a little bit different because it's the first time a grandchild has written. And like I said before, there's a certain thing about the, the granddaughter or grandchild grandparent relationship. That's very different from a parent relationship. Oh, they yeah. were, they were just once removed from things that I would talk to them about so they could really give me a lot of wisdom from having gone through parenting themselves. But I knew that there was nothing I could say to stop their fierce love for me, that they would, you know, be shocked or anything because they had done and said and seen most everything out there. Yes. And so I got really close to them when I was in college. I used to go out there on the weekends to get away from dorm life a little bit and and we got real close. Grandpa and I would go to the swap meet together and um, to the museum to greet people. And, all, you know, Grandma, Grandma, I could talk to about anything. We'd sit in for hours and talk over a cup of coffee at the breakfast table. Yeah, I, I think I think that's so terrific because we all have those kind of memories of our grandparents. Yeah. You know, and and like like I didn't realize what my grandparents did for a living. Till I was older you know you don't yes. think about that stuff they're just your grandparents you know they you don't. just enjoy them but yes. but you know as you get older then you get kind of curious to what mm -hmm. it is that they, that's exactly they, how it went yeah. for me too well and and in your case you they're famous everybody else knew what they did well I know well, except me <laughs> I don't know how that happened but uh, you know a lot of the grandchildren we just didn't pay attention we were yeah. too busy playing and 
and just having them as our grandparents that we didn't, you know, we weren't on set a lot. Um, some Sometimes we were when later on, they'd go to be on variety shows and stuff and they'd take us along and we'd, we'd be in the audience and that was fun. But, I kind of miss the variety shows. We don't. I know. Those, I know that was a definite era, wasn't it? It was like in the '60s and '70s. They yeah. they were on every show imaginable. And yeah, because um, there was a ton of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. We used to watch uh, Donnie and Marie all the time. Oh they yeah, had their little variety show. But there That's was a ton. Right. Of them. Their family was so sweet when our family moved into. Uh, Branson, Missouri, to set up the the last museum we had, and I went back there to help out. Um, the Osmond brothers um, brought over a pie <laughs> and oh, said, well, nice. "Welcome to the neighborhood," because they had a the Osmond family had a, a theater there too, and it was so cute. They were just, you know, he had um, I think it was Jimmy had his son on his on his shoulders, and you know, in just jeans and whatever, and he's carrying a pie. <laughs> welcome to the neighborhood <laughs> yeah i love that <laughs> yes. so what's the what's the reaction been from family members about this book about the book yeah you know my cousins are excited about it they uh they've all expressed you know great i'm i you know i'm excited about this book and my aunts and uncles have been very supportive too. I think, you know, you wonder what hasn't been said about them. And I just found that I had a lot to say and it was all personal stories. Yeah. And so it is different than the other books out there about them. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, is there, you know, you, there's so many good stories in there, but is there one that's your favorite about your grandparents? Well, I think, um, I think the one that's, well, there's a lot that stick out in my mind, but um, when I graduated from college, they said, what would you like for graduation gift? And I said, I don't know. And, and so they, they said, yeah, <laughs> they said, think <laughs> about it. And so I got back to them and I said, you know, I'd really like to go hunting with grandpa, not because I have a hunting kind of need to hunt because I don't, I'm not. I, I I don't have a need to hunt, but I loved doing things that he felt comfortable with. And yeah. I knew that was a big part of his life and I'd never gone with him. So he took me first of all to the, out to the, by the barn and we shot targets, you know, clay pigeons. He got mm -hmm. a whole box of those yellow clay pigeons, 200 in a box. And that day, you know, he showed me how to, you know, he gave me all like a lesson and I shot with the Clark Gable gun he had that he had uh, bought from Clark Gable. And that's a whole story in itself that it's in the book. Um, and I missed 199 out of 200. I got one, I one. You're I, ready. <laughs> mortified, mortified. I got back in the truck. I was so dejected. I was looking down. I just said, Grandpa, I'm so sorry I wasted all of your clay pigeons. You know, I just did a terrible shot and I'm so sorry. And he didn't say anything. He was quiet. And I looked up and he was looking straight ahead because he was very shy. And it was amazing that he was even going to open up, you know, but he looked straight ahead and he said, not wasted. He said, I'm just glad that, you know, you grew out of that stage when he was wearing a neck brace. I was really afraid of him. Yeah. It was the time he said, I'm just glad you grew up to want to do stuff with your old grandpa and um, love that and it was like wow you know what i mean that was the side issue the whole shooting and the thing it was the time spent together that he just really reveled in you know that his one of his grandchildren wanted to be with him so what a great that, memory i mean that made me tear up that's awesome yeah it was really uh one of those times that just sticks out in my mind very yeah. very special well, I like how you name dropped uh, Clark Gable too, because that's not one that most people get to name drop. Well, no, <laughs> no, they just had similar interests, and um, and he he shot with that gun one day, and he couldn't hit a thing, not one thing, and he he threw the gun down and blankety blank this and that, <laughs> you know, uh, this gun I can't shoot a thing, and does anyone want to buy it? And Grandpa was hunting with him and he was shooting with him he's right there he says i'll buy it he says okay fine and he bought it for some ridiculous 
you know, little amount of money. Well, are we sure that it wasn't the gun that was the reason that you were missing everything? Well, here's the thing. Grandpa bought that gun and then he went on to a big uh, uh, shooting match in Ohio somewhere and he shot every one of them and blew everybody out of the water with that gun and won it. So, no, it was not the gun. <laughs> I was trying to help you out. <laughs> I figured if Clark Gable was having trouble, too. <laughs> trying, to, trying to help me out. Yes. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy. <laughs> but What do you um, think they would say if they read the book? Oh, they would love it because, you know, a lot of the stories that are in this book um, are stories that we talked about when they were passing, when they were, you know, a, when they at the very end of their life at their bedside. And we reminisced over these very stories that are in this book. And yes. um, so they would love it because it's exactly how it happened. And they these were memories for them that were special, just like they were for me. You I know? love that. So. I love that. I've tried for several years to get my parents interested in this podcast. And they always say, they always say, well, we talk to you every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, why do we need to watch a podcast? We talk to you every day. But when yeah. I told him that you were coming on, my dad is such a Roy Rogers fan. He was just, then he was interested. He's like, well, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll watch <laughs> we, that one. Well, you know, Burt Reynolds' dad was the same way. Burt Reynolds' dad never gave him any credibility as an actor until one day he went hunting with grandpa. And Bert went back and told his dad and his dad was quiet for a minute and said, you went hunting with Roy, huh? Roy Rogers. Now you've made it, son. You've made it big. <laughs> and that was the defining moment for his dad that Bert Reynolds was a success. So <laughs> it's funny. Very you funny. know what, what I think is, is so great is those old movies and that show, they still hold up pretty well like if yes. you watch them now i get that they're older and and the production yeah. value and stuff's older but they still kind of hold up because people love those kind of you know heartwarming but still mm -hmm. kind of some adventure and stuff in there we love that stuff yeah i think it's it's well it's definitely fun for me it's very nostalgic to watch that stuff and they used to film their stuff right on their property there they'd put on their makeup in the bedroom and walk right out onto the 300 something acres they had to um, film their, their Westerns. So wow. good memories. Yeah. I mean, how, how nice would it be to own the property that you're filming on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a kid's dream that, that ranch in Chatsworth. It was just magical. I loved it. What there all did you do on that ranch? What's that? What all did you do on that ranch? Oh, we we played hide and seek. There were huge boulders and rocks and and just they there was so much room. They had they had all kinds of um, animals, cows yes. and chickens and sheep, everything. And I mean, what didn't we do? We they had a pool and we'd go in the pool and Grandpa would jump in with us and we'd get on his back and he, we'd play chicken, you know, with him. And <laughs> um, it was just a family friendly place and yeah. filled with relatives that loved me and I felt safe and secure. It was, it was really nice. I, I, I love that so much. That's we've got, um, you know, we're newer grandparents, but we've, we're getting ready to have our fifth, uh, next month. Oh, congratulations. And, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, every, like a couple times a week, we try to get them all together at uh -huh. our house just for that, just so they can kind of have that bonding family yes. time and get close with their cousins. And I think that's mm -hmm. so important. It is because then they have that sense of family. It's yeah. easy to drift apart if you don't get the kids together. That's and, right. Um, yeah. And I miss that when grandma and grandpa were gone, then they were the house we always congregated at and people sort of spread out and moved away. And it's been, you know, we still keep in touch, but I miss those days of getting together. I do too. I'd say that we are the same way, you know, with, with both sets of grandparents, that's where those sides of the families would gather. And, yeah. and when we lost those, you know, we, we still stay 
pretty well in touch, but we don't get together in groups like that. No, it's it's like the bottom drops out. The hub of the wheel is gone. And yeah. um, although grandma would always say after one of our gatherings, because there were like 60 people there all the time. And she said, I'm, I'm not going to do this next year. It's just too much work. And then she'd do it again the next year and she'd forget what she said. <laughs> And um, she was funny. She was very funny. <laughs> yeah, well, she came across as very, like, a good sense of humor. Oh, she did have a very good sense of humor. And um, yeah, she came across that way. What uh, what grades do you teach? Uh, I've taught everything from preschool to sixth grade. Oh. And I've taught in Africa. We lived in a little village of straw huts wow. for a year. And then I lived in Europe for seven years and taught over there with the Department of Defense military schools. So... I've taught every grade and um, yeah, I've moved around a lot. Yeah. So it's that's, been good that's experience. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm assuming that, that your students may not know who your grandparents are. No, is. they don't. And some of their parents don't even know, but their grandparents do. Yeah. And it's funny because one of them realized that I have a book out and uh they oh they were all excited they they went online on amazon and got it and i'm like oh no <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> that's not sure good, though. that means they they care about you that's cool. yeah but i'm not sure i want these two worlds to kind of meet or collide you know <laughs> but um it's fine it's fine yeah and um it's fun to Did talk about it because it you know it the values that they stood for still hold up today they sure do yeah, they sure do. Is the book filled with uh, pictures? Oh, my husband's ec ecstatic that there's so many pictures. Uh, yes, there are lots of pictures. Usually at the end of the chapter, I have the pictures of what I was talking about in the chapter. Wow. And then I have a section at the end that has lots of pictures as well. And um, yeah, my husband, um, he was a he he also had a degree in English, but he hates to read. I don't understand that. So uh, he's really happy that there are so many pictures in this book. And actually, there were 125 pictures I wanted to put in the book. And they, they said, no, you, you've reached your max, Julie. <laughs> so seems like this would make a good documentary. Well, you know, you think um, they've done other ones on them. But I just I just feel like there's a different viewpoint here. Yeah, of course. On. And um. And you're kind of you're from the inner circle. You actually get, you know, a, a peek into their lives, not just as entertainers, but at home. Yeah, it's um, well, it's something that all 15 of us, 16, one one of my cousins passed away. Um, but it's one that that all of us have experienced. Although my cousin asked me, why do you seem to have more experiences with them than I do? And I think it was because I pressed in. I was always asking for their attention and in college I made an effort to not that they didn't I don't that's not a negative thing it's sure. just that I kept calling and saying hey can I come out for the weekend well and, that doesn't always happen with teenagers college age kids because you're yeah. so busy at that time in your life that's usually where you you kind of pull away a little bit from family not intentionally that's just because you're no, busy but you're, you're kind back. of getting your independence yeah that's right and, um, but that was, those were times that were very, very special. And I felt it at the time. And I'm glad, I'm glad I had so many weekends with them. Um, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And they, Did, and they were glad too, because they felt very loved themselves. Um, because, you know, grandpa, you know, you never know who has what motive when you're that big, you know, do right. they like me for who I really am? Or do they just want to kind of be around somebody famous i don't know but they knew that you know my heart was just wanting to be with their heart i love that i love that did did roy or dale were they fans of anybody back then well that's a good question well i don't know if it's really called a fan but they loved billy graham and his wife they were good friends with them oh and that's they, right i've read that they really loved them and the cashes johnny and june cash too they were you know the six of them were good friends and um but as far as somebody to meet you know it's funny I and I never asked 
who they met. It didn't occur to me to ask if they, yes. you know, but, uh, but every Christmas they'd have this big Christmas card basket. And I would love to go through and look at all the cards that they got from, from everybody. And they got this big poster one time from Bob Hope and Dolores <laughs> Hope that, that was like a calendar, but it was huge. And grandma said, my stars, I don't know where I'm going to put that. You want this? And um, I said, yeah, sure. So I was in high school. So I, I had Bob Hope on my wall for a year, you know, for a calendar. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Well, that's true, because back then, they probably knew everybody. They kind of did. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they didn't run in those circles intentionally. They weren't really a part of the Hollywood crowd. Right. Um, but, yeah, because the... the they kind of did, they kind of wove in and out of it, you know, yes. at different functions and things that they saw people, but, but, you know, they're, they're real good friends where they're friends from church and they'd play hand and foot. It was some kind of card game and they, they <laughs> trade around houses and they'd, they go to each, each house a different week and that house would host the dinner. And it was like eight friends, eight, you know, four couples, and they'd get together every Friday night and play hand and foot. And, whatever that is. Uh, Again, yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I don't recognize the, the game. I don't know I what that, that card game was, but um, you know, they're, they're, they're really dear friends were, were people unknown in the business. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That kind of keeps you grounded. I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So did this spark an interest in writing? Will you, do you plan to write any other books? Well, you know, the funny thing is I have a children's story that I've written that I really wanted to get published. And that was before this one. And it's all done and ready to go, but I didn't know which way to turn because I've never done this before. And then somebody said, well, you know, you really should write about about this over here, which is the book that I just finished. Yeah. And um, Pese said, you know, it's a it's appropriate for now. And the longer you wait, you know, the less they're known, their name is out there. Right. Um, for generations and I thought you know maybe now is a good time and um and since I want I was doing it anyway for my sons so I would like to get back to I I feel like I have some children's stories in me well yeah you should keep writing you know and I also have so many pictures it'd be fun to do a picture book just with little captions and not a lot of writing oh I, I think that would do books. really well yeah yeah so well, uh, congratulations, because I think the book looks amazing. I've got my copy ordered, so it should be in in the next oh, day or you're two. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. Thank no, you. I was just super excited about it. I think I'm going to uh, read it, and then I'll give it to my dad, because he was Oh, a, yeah. 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 His we'll birthday. tell your dad hi, if, you know, if you see him, you know. Oh, I will. Yeah. That's one nice thing, is the whole family is still in this area. So I see my dad nice. and my mom every day, and- yeah, he'll be thrilled. His, his birthday's coming up in June, so I think that's it. So I've got till June to read it, and then I'll... Uh, and then, and then give it to him. Well, happy <laughs> birthday to your dad. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, uh, Julie, this has been terrific. I, what a great life that you have had, and just interesting. You know, I, I just, I love that uh, to death, because, you know, you could keep all that to yourself, and just kind of go about your life. But I think it's really cool that you're sharing that because there's so many of us out there that, that grew up as fans and it's nice hearing those stories, you know, the, it makes them more uh, human. Yeah. Well, it was definitely other people that spurred me on to, to do this. So I'm appreciative of other people. Yeah. Um, Cause like I said, it still is a bit mostly like this is my normal and I can't imagine why anybody else would think my normal was any different than their normal. And Have you gotten better at shooting since then? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, I have actually, because my husband has a gun and we go to the the range and I've gotten a, a bit better. I was, <laughs> I just, I stunk like Hogan's goat. I was horrible. <laughs> so um, I'm just glad grandpa didn't mind, you know? <laughs> well, just speaking as a, uh, I'm a pawpaw. You yeah, know, that's what they, you don't get really get to choose your own name. The kids choose it, but is that your last name, really? No, no, that's just what they call me. 
they call them oh, the oh. oh okay you know that's in this area that's it was like usually the progression is they'll call me pop pop uh -huh. when they're young you know before they can really uh talk and then it eventually evolves into to pop off pop -off. But, but just yeah just you know coming from uh that perspective all we want is to spend time with our grandkids and our yes. kids for that matter so um, it doesn't yes. matter what you're doing you just it doesn't want matter time. and it gets more and more important the older you get and you know yeah. thus the book that's that's why really i love so, it i think I everybody it. should write a book for their family you know yeah. you need to write a book well you know i've i've written down some stories about me and my brother growing up that that my uh my wife's an artist so she's working on the artwork and that's our intention is just to give those out to the you know the kids in the you better in the be careful the because then people along the way are gonna say you need to you need to get it published that's what happens <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's gonna happen but i wouldn't complain <laughs> yeah you know, it's it's really amazing to get that book for the first time and in in your hands and realize, yeah. wow, this is my memories. These yeah, are my goodness. memories in here. It's very um, emotional. It was really the day that I got my box of books. So, yeah, I love that. Are you that. are you giving some of them to the family? Are you signing, writing little notes in them? I am. I'm going to give, well, the first three are going to my sons. Like I said, that was uh, my great. reason. And, um, but I don't know what to do because we have so much family that I don't have enough books. I'm going to have to go out and buy them and give them <laughs> to my family. <laughs> so uh, you're going to lose money because your family's too big. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm thinking about this even as we're talking. So I'm going to have to be teaching, let's see, for another two years or so. <laughs> you could buy them the, um, uh, what is it, the audio versions. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, uh, Julie, thank you so much for, for coming on. I hope you'll come back at some at some point. This has been terrific. Just loved it's it. It's been really fun. Thank you for having me on. It's been great. Oh, you're really. you're so welcome and best of luck with the book. Uh, one thing before I let you go, are you on social media? And if you are, where can we find you? I am. Well, I'm I'm just on Facebook. Um, a little bit of a mouthful of a name, Julie Fox Ashley Pamilia. And no Rogers in there. Um, so I have an interesting, I have a lot of interesting stories. But anyway, I'm on Facebook. Uh, but I'm working on a website right now. Oh, and, good. Yeah, um, you should. So that should be up and running. And people can then order books from the website. I can sign them and send them back to them, you know. Um, but right now, really, the only place to get information is on Facebook or with uh you know, buying the book from Amazon or, or Barnes and yeah. Noble, but we're, you, I'm trying uh, to change that. are you doing any, uh, book signings? I am. I'm going back to Ohio, uh, to do, cause there's a Roy Rogers festival back there. And before the festival, yeah. I'm going a week early to do that. I'm going to, um, be on my friend, Allison Arngrim. I don't know if you know her, but she was, Allison's been on the program. Oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Allison. She is the I best. Know. She's crazy. She is I'm not. Like, her like the character she played oh not at all not <laughs> at all we had her as a guest and we also had rachel uh lindsey greenbush mm -hmm. uh yep. the littlest one that falls down the hill oh yeah and actually my husband and and her and and i and her and danny are really good friends and um, in fact i'm going to see him this weekend oh yeah and tell her so, i said hello i will i will then there's different yep. western festivals i'm going to be at where in uh place. where in ohio are you going to be? Um, I'm going near Cincinnati and Dayton, and then Portsmouth is where the uh, the Roy Rogers Festival is. I need to go to that. Portsmouth in our backyard, basically. It's about forty five minutes from us. Oh, that's that's not far at all. You should come. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll plan that. When when is it? It is the when is it? Where is it? Where when is it? Um, it's in August and. Okay. It is, I can tell you right now, it's the 4th and 5th and 6th of August. Yeah, we'll plan on running out there. That'd be great. That'd be yes. fun. We'll get to see you in person. 
It'd be very fun. That would be really nice. So yeah, put that in pencil down on your calendar. I did. That. I just wrote it down. Because yeah, that's yeah. so close. It'd be silly not to come out. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. So yeah, what should I do that? I go back to Ohio. Well, yeah, you should. That's that's a good uh that's a good visit. We used to like I went to school in uh, Huntington, West Virginia at Marshall, and mm -hmm. we would travel over to uh, Portsmouth all the time, you know, just on oh. a little, because it's so, just across the river. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, so. the um, oh, and it's right on the river between that and Kentucky. Like the yeah. river uh, is the divide between the two states. Yeah, it's right there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, it's been a while, but I know the area fairly well. So beautiful yeah, I'll country, plan on yeah. that. And that's well, thank Grandma's you so much. That's that's now I got I got summer plans now. There you go. There you go. Visit Roy's first boyhood home there too. So it's a <laughs> yeah, historical. I know you forget that he he grew up for a little while, you know, in this area. Yeah. Because he spent so much time out west. You you yes. kind of associate him with out west, but he's actually grew but up for a while. Yeah, he never the country boy never left him. He was always that, always that kid. Well, and that's probably part of the shyness, you know, because mm -hmm. that's that's normal for for country boys. We're we're kind of shy, a little bit introverted, and yes. I can totally see him being that. Yeah, yeah, was, pretty neat. Yeah, something. Yeah. Well, thank you, Julie. This has been the best. I hope we get to see you in August, but you got to come back. We got we got that more to talk be about. Really fun. Is this on live or is this taped? And we have um. Like when is it so 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 we tape and then my son uh edits mm -hmm. and and once as soon as he edits then we'll put it out there and i'll send over all the, the links for you. oh that'd be great yeah this has been really fun Very well thank you so much okay hold on one second roy rogers um and dale evans big part of my childhood growing up i was such a uh, western fan and my my father and my grandfather were western fans so we spent a lot of time together watching those uh those shows and movies um just thrilled to death to to get to peek behind the curtain a little bit with uh with julie and she does such a good job of sharing those stories what a great childhood that must have been growing up in that environment and it sounds very loving which i just you know they seemed larger and light than life on screen but they were just grandparents and parents at home and i love hearing about that that's that was amazing i, I hope you guys enjoyed that one as well do me a favor if you're if you're watching you know maybe share that with uh with your parents or your grandparents, because I guarantee you that they would love to uh, to hear those stories and maybe even go purchase one of the books as a present for them. So it's your heroes, my grandparents, a granddaughter's love, uh, and it's available now on Amazon. It came out yesterday on April seventeenth, and I guarantee you you're going to really enjoy it. And I think the uh, older members of your family would love it. So consider it as a, as a present. If you're finding us for the first time and you liked what you saw, we've done this almost 600 times and we have had the absolute best guests, actors, musicians, authors, you know, um, just about anything or any job that you can do in the entertainment business. We've talked to those people. We have had just outstanding unbelievable guests so please if you're finding us for the first time we could really use your support it's easy to do it's free if you prefer to watch it's on youtube meistercon pod just hit subscribe that would really help us out if you're listening wherever you're listening to your podcast from whatever application you're using just hit subscribe there that'll help us as well you can find all of those episodes audio and video on our website meistercon.com if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, say, to the Roy Rogers Festival in um, in Ohio, or if we're covering a convention, whatever we have going on, that'll be on the website, meistercon.com, so you can kind of track us there. 
Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody.